Welcome to the Nonprofit Podcast. I'm Kara, fundraising coach here at DonorBox. If you are joining us for the first time, hello, good to have you here. And thank you for choosing us to top off your cup of inspiration this week. Today, wow, we've got something for you that really made me think. Prepare for a fascinating discussion about sexual stereotyping and how this influences self-esteem and acceptance for young people. I love learning from influencer Heidi Bianco. Heidi sat down with the force of nature that is Dr. Caroline Heldman, the executive director of the Representation Project, and they looked at why this is such an important and often contentious issue and how the organization is working to change the negative impacts all this misrepresentation has on our culture, and most importantly, our kids. So over to Heidi. Welcome, I am Heidi Bianco, and this nonprofit spotlight moment is brought to you by DonorBox. Joining us today is Dr. Caroline Heldman, Executive Director of the Representation Project and Chair of the Critical Theory and Social Justice Department at the Occidental College. Her research specializes in media, the presidency, and systems of power. Dr. Heldman has published six books. I am honored to introduce you to Dr. Caroline Heldman. Welcome. Thank you so much, Heidi. It is a joy to be here, and please call me Caroline. Will do. Caroline, I want to really discuss with our viewers today around the Representation Project. It is quite phenomenal. Would you please give me the inspiration behind it, how you became involved, and give me an overview of really what it is. So the Representation Project uh, is an organization that uses media in order to fight sexism. It was founded in 2011 by Jennifer Siebel Newsom, and her name might be a little familiar. Uh, She is the first partner of California, and she produced a film and directed a film called Misrepresentation. It's now a decade ago. And that film uh, provided a critique of the ways in which girls and women are represented in media. So it looked at the hypersexualization of girls and women. It looked at how uh, women's leadership is often misportrayed. And that film had a profound impact on our culture. It aired nationally. There were discussion groups across the United States. And it really launched uh, a national movement around around media representations. Jim then went on to produce uh, and and direct another film focused on boys and men and uh, toxic masculinity and the ways in which we construct masculinity, uh, how they harm boys and men. And that was a film called The Mask You Live In in 2015. She came out with The Great American Lie that looked at how the ways in which we structure our government and our policies, um, because we structure them in hyper-masculine ways, uh, we end up leaving a lot of folks behind without a social safety net. And that was a film called The Great American Lie that premiered in 2018. So uh, Jen has made some fantastic films. I run her organization. I got involved as an expert in misrepresentation, and I've appeared in all of her films. Uh, But I will say that that the organization goes beyond films at this point. We also have a youth filmmaker program. We run youth media academies where uh, underrepresented uh, young people learn how to make films. They make films, they get them out into the world. We submit them to film festivals. They win awards, their voices are heard and their their topics and policies are amplified. Uh, We also have an online space called the Youth Media uh, Lab where they can come and learn how to make media, whether it's a podcast, a radio show, a video, uh, a short film. We also run an annual youth film festival. So Jen is very dedicated to passing the baton to the next generation of filmmakers with a specific emphasis on underrepresented uh, folks. So, um, you know, poor poor youth, um, BIPOC youth, of course, women, LGBTQ plus youth, uh, young people with disabilities. So lots of folks who otherwise wouldn't have their voices heard. Um, And lastly, we run big campaigns, right? We ran the Not Buying It campaign that just 
transform Super Bowl ads from sexist to ads that you could actually watch with your family. That happened in 2013. We also had uh, a major campaign in 2015 focused uh, called Ask Her More, focused on getting reporters to ask women on the red carpet about more than just their dresses and their hair, right? So now um, we actually are asking women celebrities about their work and about political causes. Uh, we just launched a big campaign called Respect Her Game, which focused on better representations of women in the Olympics. So we're constantly using film and media and social media campaigns in order to raise awareness about and address sexism in our culture. Full transparency, I did watch your trailers and I cried because the misrepresentation, the gentleman. Um, film based about what men should be. I mean, we need to break down these barriers. Introducing DonorBox Events, a new seamless ticketing solution to fire up your nonprofit fundraising efforts. Golf day or glittering gala, now you can create effective event pages with unlimited ticket levels, determine fair market, and tax-deductible ticket values for every new fundraising function in a matter of minutes. Maximize and simplify your ticket management with DonorBox Events, helping you help others. Can you give me a little bit more about people that or a person or a group that you have really seen this change their lives? Well, I hear from a lot of uh, girls who tell me even today, after you know 10 years, I'm still getting emails uh, from girls who say, look, I just saw misrepresentation for the first time. And uh, I thought that my body hatred and my feeling insecure every time I you know, watch a TV show or, or my eating disorder, I, I thought I was suffering alone, but I see that this is coming from the broader culture. I'm getting these messages from the broader culture and now I feel empowered to really push back against that. Um, I also hear from a lot of uh, boys and young men who say, look, the mask, I, mask you live in transformed the way I think about my place in the world. It made me realize that I didn't have to capitulate to this box of masculinity that means that I have to be stoic, that I can't have emotions, that I have to bifurcate my head and my heart, um, you know, that, that I have to act tough, that I have to always be in control, um, you know, that I have to use uh, romantic relationships as a way to, to really amplify my manhood, um, that it allows them to be fully human. And so I think the biggest impact continues to be the impact of gender Jennifer Siebel Newsom's films on young women and young men and gender non-conforming folks. That's fabulous. I know that you guys are really breaking down the deep-seated beliefs and culture and building the community for these young people and all people, actually. So what would be the one thing that you would like our viewers to walk away with today? I would like viewers to go to our website and join us in this, in this fight for gender justice. Um, I think at a really deep level, the ways in which we use gender to organize our world don't work. In fact, they have negative and harmful implications for young girls, for young boys, and for gender non-conforming folks. Um, I think that the one thing that we can really do is challenge the idea that gender norms and stereotypes um, are natural, that they just exist in nature. They don't, and they're harmful. And we can all do something about this for the generations that are coming up behind us. So if you go to our website and you join us, maybe, you know, maybe you... Uh, you screen the mask you live in in your son's high school, or maybe you join us with the Respect Her Game uh, hashtag online campaign to make Olympic coverage better. And so a girl who's sitting at home is seeing uh, you know, a, a shot putter being discussed in terms of her game and her prowess and her athleticism instead of being discussed in terms of her appearance or being discussed in terms of her romantic relationships, which have nothing to do with why she's in the Olympics. So maybe maybe you shift the, the life of a young person simply by accessing our resources and having that ripple effect throughout the culture. I'm so glad you brought up the Olympics since we are going through this right now. Would you please share with me? I, we had mentioned 
um, the Olympic report. Share with me how you are connected with that. Well, we put out a report just looking at the first week of press coverage with the Olympics, and we found some pretty astounding things. Uh, the first major negative finding is that 80% of the hosts who are talking about the Olympics are men, right? 80%, which means that women's voices are still um, pretty much a race when it comes to the uh, blow by blow commentary. Um, we also found that uh, women uh, athletes were far more likely to be sexualized. Uh, with camera angles and in terms of the outfits that they are required to wear by many of, of uh, the Olympic standards. Um, we also found that male athletes are simply referred to as athletes most of the time, uh, but women athletes are referred to as women athletes, right? So you have the norm being being men for athletes, and then women are other, right? They're women athletes. So we saw that the sort of very subtle language framing women as less than the norm. Um, we also found that uh, women athletes were seven times more likely to be referred to as a gender diminutive, for example, being called girls instead of women, or being called chicks instead of women. Yes, that actually came up in the Olympics. And so treating women athletes as though they infantilizing them, right? Treating them like they're, they're children um, and using diminutive terms, which simply, you know, depress or, or shrink their status as, as athletes on a world stage. So we have a long way to go in terms of equitable media coverage when it comes to women athletes in the Olympics. Yes, I agree. And that stuns me when you said chicks and they're not referring to something in a hen house. Exactly. <laughs> terrifying. It's absolutely terrifying. Caroline, I am so very grateful for your time. And I know how busy you are with your books and the representation project and teaching and research. I am just so grateful for illuminating not only myself, but all the viewers today. Thank you. Thank you, Heidi. It's an honor to be with you. Thank you. A special thank you for DonorBox for sponsoring this nonprofit moment. At DonorBox, we believe helping you helps others. As a mom of a tween, a teen, and a young adult, I can honestly say that I've observed the destructive impact of skewed sexual stereotyping. And I can see the positive impact the representation project is making in our world. Using media to fight, not perpetuate sexism, is an inspired and inspiring approach to meeting young people where they listen, on screens large and small. By working to steadily dismantle the marginalization of vulnerable groups, we ensure that we are all viewed and projected through an equitable lens. Caroline and the Representation Project are spearheading this global movement that challenges damaging gender stereotypes and norms. And I think we can agree that this is work that really needs to be done. The Nonprofit Podcast is here to amplify positive social impact. You'll find us here with a new, inspiring, informative, and always interesting interview every Thursday. So follow, rate, and download the Nonprofit Podcast today and be sure to join us next time. So until next time, stay inspired, the Nonprofit Podcast, powered by DonorBox, helping you help others.